What's going on YouTube? Today is all about Sculptra. I'm going to show you my combination technique that I use in order to provide the most natural looking results possible. I'm going to explain why I use this technique and of course it's for free. So stay tuned and enjoy. Let's get into it. Before we begin, my name is Dan Julian, nurse practitioner for Dan Aesthetics Medical. We're located here in Ottawa, Canada. I collaborate with all the top providers in the industry to provide you guys with the most up-to-date information possible. And I'm known to produce natural looking results using injectables, which is perfect for today's video because we are talking about Sculptra. And when it's used correctly, it can provide the most natural looking results possible. Let's get into it. Now the anatomy lesson, my favorite part. Essentially, our superficial fat pads move forward over time. And the reason why that happens is because, well, the skull is morphing, especially in two essential areas, the nose and the gonial angle. The nose here is all cartilage. Underneath, there's a hole, and that hole actually starts opening up and retrudes in on itself. As that happens, our superficial fat pads move towards it. This is why this gets deeper and these get heavier. The gonial angle actually starts thinning out the bone and starts shifting forward, especially in women. And as a result, this moves forward too. And this is the reason why when we go to the mirror, like I just need a little that because the superficial fat pads used to be there. Now, what about the deep fat pads? The essential ones that I want you to understand are your medial and lateral soups. The deep fat pads here tend to shrink over time. It's the first place in the face that we actually see visible hollowing. As a result, we lose the support structure. And this is where a lot of people end up missing the boat when it comes to HA and Sculptra restoration. Because what they end up doing is they can do full restoration here using whatever product they want. However, if they inject the cheeks here too superficially, well, it might look good at rest. However, whenever they smile, they'll end up having these big balls of cheeks that we all have seen way too often. So take that into consideration whenever you're doing your Sculptra. Sure. All right, now you guys are all primed for the injection techniques. Let's bring in our assistant, Sarah. What's going on, Sarah? And we have our two injection patterns here. Let's start off with the boluses. We are going to be placing this in the deep medial and lateral soups. The medial soup is usually just around here where you're going to feel a hollowing or see a hollowing, and you're going to want to place your needle deep here. I always aspirate. Why? Because there is an infraorbital foramen with a little artery here. But remember, this is a liquid product. This is like water whenever you're injecting sculpture. So you'll have a true aspiration. So aspirate if there's no flash pack, inject. If not, change positions. Same thing here. This is a much safer area. If you ever want to find the apex, which is the second area that I'm injecting, they take the tail of the eyebrow straight down, find the bone right here, the zygoma. And once I have that, that's my place where I'm going to inject. So basically make my marking right here, one injection here, one injection here, a couple boluses and you're good to go. The third place where I might place a bolus is right here. And I typically usually save that for my masculine clients because I want some projection here. So otherwise we're good to go. All right, now let's get into the cannula technique. I love this technique here. This is where I'm placing the product more superficially. I'm placing this all throughout the superficial fat pads. And the way I do that is by three injection points. So this is where my introducer will go in. So essentially it's where a needle will break through the skin, allowing me entrance for the cannula because the cannula is a blunt tipped object where I'm just essentially placing product and moving veins and arteries out of the way. Now. Each of these three areas are going to be numbed using lidocaine and epinephrine. And the reason why I like epinephrine is because A, it lasts longer as a vasoconstrictor, and B, what it does is it blanches the skin. That blanching tells me where I place that because if I do both sides, I can go back and be like, where did I actually inject here? I forget. The blanching will keep those markings open for me. I have highlighted that these areas can accentuate all the way to the nasolabial fold, but this is going to be a plus or minus. I might actually stop right here because this is where the nasolabial fold exists. I may not want to further enhance that. I'm just saying that I can potentially have access to here if I want to, but I'm definitely going to want to revolumize this entire area and these three injection points give me that access. 
All right, now when it comes to the tools that I use, I prefer using a 25 gauge cannula, which is wide enough to disperse the product and at the same time, still safe enough to help bump veins and arteries out of the way. I use a longer cannula as well, so I'm using a two inch that will help give me access to all the areas necessary. Now the amount of product that's necessary does vary on each client, but the general rule is one vial per decade of life. So if you're 40 years old and you're coming in, you're likely going to need four vials. I never do more than two vials per session and I space them out two months apart. Once you have your ideal look, that should last for a good two years. But if you want, what you can do is once you have your ideal look, come in annually and just do two vials each year and it'll maintain the look. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please check out my Patreon where I do these injections on real life clients, giving you the most up-to-date information possible. Until the next time, take care of yourselves, exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Cheers. <laughs>